this video got a gameplay for you. I feel like it's pretty good gameplay. Uh, just kind of talking through some different things. Kind of an off meta. You don't see a lot of Trey Y flex. So I want to talk about that as well. Uh, kind of rock kind of rocking my dollar stuff if you guys want to get any of my full ebooks here uh the offensive and defensive ebooks that i've i've i ran in both of these games or in this game uh both of those ebooks are available in my patreon it's only ten dollars to become a patreon member links in the description right off the bat he dots me with this kind of like unique little crossing route from it's not just from trey flex from trips but it's a really nice little route and i honestly just haven't played i'll be honest i just haven't played the way he was running his trips different than what i've seen uh truly different than what i've seen i'm trying to remember i don't even know for sure i think this is chief's playbook but i'm not sure i can't remember exactly and and i have kind of a brain fart in the beginning of this game i don't have my my deep out zone ko on the left side which actually ends up hurting me a lot in this so you'll see here i mean right off the bat he's kind of dotting me down the field and i don't normally give up much to trips i feel like my trips is pretty good and he just starts kind of like hitting just pock like hitting little spots that i hadn't seen before so kind of getting set up here and um also kind of on i was actually on the phone i i got in a uh, car accident the other day so i was actually on the phone while i was playing the first part of this i'd planned to do this recording but i uh, was on the phone kind of dealing with the car stuff so anyways here uh off bat just yeah i mean it's honestly just really bad user by me right there and i just played bad for the first half really like the entire first drive, he's just doing stuff that I had not seen a lot. And this is the kind of the power of off meta. You know, I talk a lot about why I think meta is really important. But if you have a legitimate scheme, here goes the bunch strong offset. He might be in Bears playbook. Uh, he's got to be in Jets. I feel like he has to be in Jets, actually. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what his playbook was here. But um, I'm also surprised he was in this Trey Y flex versus trip side and offset. But anyway, he's just kind of audibling around a little bit. And uh, I actually have a couple of plays in this game that are really bad and a couple of plays that are really good. So kind of goes to something. Just don't see stuff like this a lot. So when you are playing something that you haven't seen a lot, um, if they're really good at the offense, be prepared. Like they might get a couple early uh, touchdowns. You're trying to kind of evaluate what are and, – and the other thing you're trying to do is when you're playing something that you haven't really labbed against, like he's actually running a bunch strong down here, and I noticed, okay, there's the RPO. I was wondering when we're going to see that. Get him on a fourth down, which I feel like, okay, perfect. And really, when you play someone and you, they're running just kind of some stuff that you just haven't seen before, my advice would be try as hard as you can to play a little bit more basic and just try to – and that was just terrible. I can't believe I gave that up. But try to play a little bit more basic and then try to, like, relate what you're seeing to something that you've seen before, right? Relate what you're seeing to something you've seen before. Even his defense was a little bit off meta to me. Like, he's in 6-1 here, which is pretty standard. But he'll do some stuff that's just kind of like I just haven't seen it. So let's start out with the RPO, try to get on a hash, get a nice play, get out. And uh, automatically, I'm like, all right, this is going to be an easy win. But then he just starts doing some stuff defensively that, I, like I said, I just had not seen. He starts to man a line and come out and, and I don't even – I think this is a nickel. I don't know. He starts to man a line like cover two man. I feel like this should have been a touchdown. Is it a touchdown? Did I catch it? No, I drop it. Yeah, I kind of feel like that should have been a touchdown. I got gift wrapped on. I feel like that was a pretty good read. And, um, yeah, I just – I don't know. Kind of the story of this game really comes down to I feel like I just missed a couple reads and called some bad plays, like just for the way he was playing. I uh, kind of called some bad plays. This was my, I believe this was my first game in the morning. And so sometimes whenever you play your first game, you know, you're just kind of, you know, I don't know, just call some bad plays. So anyway, right there, Dagger, really good play call against zone. I mean, he actually just did a really good job of kind of mixing up what he was doing. He was either in man or zone. And he would do random alignment stuff that I just had not really been comfortable with. Hadn't seen a lot of this stuff. Like, you see the linebackers over the center. Just stuff like that. Like, you just haven't seen it. And anyway, so here, I don't know what I'm even... I'm going to this red zone play. End up getting a delay. You know, just like kind of like just... I don't know. Just not very, uh, not very sharp offensively for me. This is not a very sharp game by any means. I got a lot of... And this was the main problem. If you look there on that, on that last play... The tight end just kind of ran into the tackle. I got a lot of that this game of these like bad animations, bad bumping animations. And I just feel like they really affected my precision offensively. I could not get in a real good rhythm in the first half for sure. And like I said, it's just a different formation almost every single play. Like I think this, I don't even know what this is. Like 4-3 four, four, under, 
Like, I don't, I don't know what he's running. I don't know what I'm running. <laughs> I don't know why I was running a wide trail post this close to the end zone. But, I mean, everybody, everybody's bagged. Check down the running back actually didn't go too bad for me. Get on in third down. Go to the RPO here. Just trying to sneak a seven. Just trying to honestly sneak seven in. And I feel like that's got to be a touchdown. But it doesn't make a bad play. And then here, this is a terrible play call. I'd never do this. On fourth and goal, why would you run the ball on fourth and goal? You still give yourself enough opportunities. And he was playing good red zone defense. He ends up getting a stop. And now I'm like, crap, I got to you know lock in here. So he goes, uh, and like I said, just this random Trey White flex inside zone. And inside the inside zone from Trey White flex is harder to stop than the inside zone from trips. In my opinion, just the way the blocks line up are a little better. And so there are some 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 definite benefits to to your uh, Trey White flex type scheme. So here, get a sack, kind of sent everybody, trying to kind of force a safety, third and eleven. And I feel like in general, just my defense this game, like it was in the first half, special especially in the first half, it was just kind of ah, just it just it was like close to getting a stop, and then just I don't know, like right here. I mean, who calls an RPO bubble on third and 11? You know, I guess my man, JV, JVK. Well, fourth and three. Feel good about getting him on a fourth down again. And then I got a really nice KO. Uh, that's just mid zone being mid zone, man. You got to have mid zone. Your back four and dollars should all have deep zone KO and mid zone KO. I think they're the most important abilities in ga in the game. I actually think they're more important than pick artists. Um, but pick artists are probably the second most important, but the KOs are so you need to have KOs everywhere. Really important to me. All right. So here I'm like, all right, let's get it back. Let's get it to an actual red zone play that I've ran before. So I go to my standard one, but I mean, he just blitzes me and I had a touchdown at three, I had two touchdowns there and just, uh, just, just missing reads, you know, just not playing well. And when you're not playing well, like you're not playing well, you know, and you got to kind of. I don't know, just come back to some of the basics, you know, come back in here, get another random bump. I got a great animation and actually get in for seven here. So uh, great. That was a high point free form outside up and out and was able to kind of just put it where only my receiver could get it. It was either my thought there was like, I'm either going to throw a touchdown or I'm going to throw an incomplete pass, but I'm not throwing a pick on that because I highballed it. Uh, and so it's just, it's hard. It's a hard trajectory for him to be able to play. Now I'm feeling like, okay, I got to stop here. This is my stop. Now I'm going to, you know, kind of get back to, Playing good defense. You know, the KOs are the KOs. That's why I say they're so, so important. And second and 10, I, I mean, you just watch this game and you're like, man, there's so many, so many little things. But going to send the A gap here. You know, like, look how long that play action takes. And he just throws that. And then, I uh, can't make a tackle there. Get up for five. You know, just. Just kind of one of those games, man, where, you know, you're, you're – so then what happens is as we start to kind of do this, especially on this drive, I start to get really aggressive. That's where I notice my KO is not out there, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, my KO is not out there. You know, my, my mid zone and deep out KO is at slot corner right now, which is not where it's supposed to be. Um, so here I go to one of my favorite defenses for trips. I love this defense, just some man-ups and stuff. And then he just dots me. I mean, that's just mm, – got on my – got clicked on my – my defensive lineman here. I'm switching my KO. I saw it. So I'm like, okay, let's get that switch. I don't know why Traverius Ward is, I don't know why I put him at slot corner, but anyway, let's get back into some defense here. So I'm thinking, okay, just hold the three, you know, you'll be fine. Go to a pretty aggressive defense, but I love this defense against trips. One of my favorites, uh, just some cross manning ends up running the ball. And uh, second and six, runs the ball again. Third and six, third and five. Goes this bunch strong. I feel like it's one of my better plays of the game. This is where I feel like I thought I was going to win. As you see, I just shoot the RPO well, able to get out there, able to make the pick. And I feel like that was a pretty good play. Like, again, if this is why I like to stand right here. And, again, it's just, it's just you know, running out there, didn't get blocked, and got the pick. So he just kind of fat-fingered it out there, kind of assumed it'd be open, able to take advantage of that. Now I'm thinking, okay, you know, I'm gonna, now I'm going to go win the game, put my foot on him. You know, uh, phone call's probably over at this point. Throw my corner route, and now I'm feeling good. I'm like, okay, got back in rhythm. Now we're back. You know, seven to seven in a really good in a really good spot, right? In a really good spot. Now, the thing, the kind of the mistake I make, I feel like, in this in this game, too, is I also start to kind of, I don't know, think a little bit about managing the clock. Cause he was just doing some weird stuff. Like, like you see here, like this is just kind of weird. You know, a man of mine dollar. And I feel like my play call is not terrible, 
you know, and I just, uh, my trail route's standing wide open, but I get shedded. Third and 12 now. I'm like, okay, let's go to this other way to beat man. Love this combo. And this is just a bad read. I had a touchdown. I had the post for a touchdown. I don't know what I was looking at. I mean, I know I can't throw that corner out against cover two. And I, I guess maybe, it, I don't even know. It's just kind of like, he. Huh, it's this is why sometimes defensively, sometimes the best defense is just changing the coverage up. It truly is. Sometimes the best defense is just changing the coverage up. This is a terrible play call by me. He's showing me man coverage. I go to dagger and everybody just bumps each other and nobody gets open. Gets shedded and here we go. So that was terrible. That was a really, really bad sequence by me and actually puts him in a good spot. So now he's back and then he just throws this and ah, <laughs> you can't go for that pick right there. My user or my guy goes for the pick. Just terrible decision by me. Gets him in a red zone spot. First and goal. Probably going to run the ball. He loves to run the ball. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, I've been playing pretty decent red zone defense. And then I do something that I just think is silly by me. I kind of overthink it again, and I go to 3-4 odd, and then he just runs inside zone and gets seven. So now I'm thinking, okay, you got to go down. You got to get some points. 26 seconds, two timeouts. Even if you just get three, um, I get ball at halftime. You know, so that's that's kind of the, the thought process. Go down and get three. Uh, kind of make the best of a bad situation. And, and really a self-inflicted one, you know. I mean, I've had, I've had two. I think I got stopped two or three times offensively this game. And just, and, you know, again, they're just uncomfortable, like just doing some random stuff. And it just shows the power, I think, of, you know, sometimes the off meta, you know, can, you know, and not even just off meta, but just like doing different things. There's some bumping again. My clear out doesn't clear that out. And then I get sacked. And now I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm actually not going to get points here. So, you know, I'm seeing a lot of cover two. So I go to one of my favorite plays against cover two. It's that wide trail play. It's the play that I missed earlier and i'm thinking okay if his user stays down on the drag or the tight end i'm gonna throw the post that's basically my thought process i'm really only looking for that um or at least that's my main what i want to do i see he sits on the trail i'm able to throw the post get a nice catch and now we're back out in business and with 11 seconds no timeouts i need a i need about 10 yards uh for like a comfortable field goal so i go to this play and basically the thought process with this play is just to try to pull his user. So I'm trying to take put his user to the post and then throw the tight end over the middle. And then also look to the corner. You see cover two, but he actually puts a middle third there. So I'm like, okay. And then his user still goes to the post. So I'm able just to check down to the tight end and basically get out of half with uh, with three there. So, so now 10 to 14, not a terrible uh, situation. He actually, I actually get a crazy, um, I actually get a pick here. So I get an interception, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I might be able to crib this. You know, I'm about to take over the game. It's be a huge shift, and I just can't get it done. Can't get it done. But I do get ball at half. So this is a really important drive, really, really important drive at half. I feel like I've – I feel like if I could get in the lead, it would put a lot more pressure on him, and my defense would ultimately be able to come away with the stop. So this is a big drive for me. And I just, like I said, I've been playing really sloppy, able to reset at halftime, even just for a second, and just kind of get back to fundamentals. So here I go to dagger. I actually love this throw. I feel like I wish this was a catch, man. I I probably got it just a little bit too far to the left, but that's a great, in my opinion, that's a great throw because he doesn't have a he doesn't have a KO on that player. But anywho, so here we're gonna go to Durham. And just try to – this is just a yard gainer. This is just, you know, it's like a, designed to be a yard gainer. Here I have the running back, throw the running back, and then I get hit as I throw. And you see, like, just some of this random stuff was really bugging me. Um, you know, just kind of like he'd go zone, and then he'd go man, and then he'd man a line, and then he'd put the safeties in the box. I mean, it was just a bunch of random stuff. You see here again, man a line. You know, so I'm like, okay, let's just – Maybe stop giving this guy a little too much credit and just say, okay, he's giving me a man look. I'm going to run a man beater. So I go to PA boot over. One of my favorite ways to beat man coverage. Tight end gets open. Throw it. Get up and uh, get some good yardage there. First and 10. Ball about midfield. And we will see what happens. So 4-3, uh, even 6-1. I'm going to go to dagger. And I'm kind of thinking the same thing on the left side. So here I see I got one-on-one. -on -one. And I just like my chances with that fade route. As you see, able to get a nice throw and uh, able to get in for six. So 
Really nice. Uh, big seven. Big, big, big drive from me. And so now I'm up three. And like I said, I feel like when I got up, I feel like he was going to play a little different offensively. I feel like I could have got a, I could get a stop. You know, even if I hold the three, it just allows me to be in, in more control of the situation, more control of the game, which is, uh, is kind of the idea here. So Trey White flex again. And, and like I said, this was kind of a weird offense, you know, like just random stuff was open that isn't normally open. And, um, all, a combination of that and playing kind of bad, just playing bad in general. And then here you see good read, drag, and he's hitting the he's just hitting the pockets that's open. I mean it's it's good reads by him. First and ten uh, here. So basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to start using this defense alignment on the right side. I feel like that's one of the best ways to stop a trip set like this. And I feel like this was really good defense, but then I just get. Actually, no, I get him right here, but then he gets out of there and gets 10. I feel like that was perfect defense, and he's able to get out of there and get 10 yards. Again, he hasn't really liked that coverage. It's probably my favorite coverage, but then he does something that I have not seen much. He goes to bunch tight end, and I'm in the same coverage. Uh, this was a bad call by me, bad decision. I should have checked out of this. I shouldn't have stayed in this. I thought this would play a little better, but I didn't realize how misaligned I was, and uh, the man coverage just did not man cover very well, so... First and 10, ball in the 14. Kind of need to hold the three here. I don't have to, but you really, like, in this situation, you don't want to, you know, you really do want to hold a three. He's going to go probably to the RPO. No, he goes to trail. Mid zone, able to do what mid zone does. Yeah, he just kind of did some odd stuff. And, and sometimes when, you know, again, the more complicated your opponent becomes, the more simple you need to play. The more simple you need to play. So here... 10 and 5. I got clicked on the wrong guy. I was trying to get on the D end. I actually get a sack here. This is a big play by big big play by the defense. Puts him in a third and 19. So now I'm like, okay, this is my stop right here. I'm able to get off field. I'm going to go to my favorite trips defense. It's the man ups on the left. You see uh, Ward plays out of his mind good and able to get the pick and able to get the stop. So that was huge. So now we not only hold a three, but we also get a we get a set or a interception. So now we're able to go down, potentially get seven, and really swing the mo swing the entire pendulum, you know, more so in our favor than already is. So kind of go to just some basic stuff here. I think I'm gonna go to basic PA boot over. But he's showing me his own look. And this is where again, this is where there is some value. I have triangle standing wide open. I just didn't see it. There is a lot of value. This is another thing that changing your lookup a lot will do. When you give somebody a, a different look a lot they start to miss reads because they can't really get into a rhythm. And that's really the story of this game for me offensively. I could not get in a rhythm. Um, I made a couple of plays to, I made enough plays to win the game, but I also made plenty of plays to lose the game. You know, his, his, um, him just mixing stuff up, giving me a bunch of different looks. It really did mess with me a little bit, you know, and I'm just missing reads that I would never miss some of this, obviously first game of the day and all that, but more so than that, I mean, I think it's just, you know, he just played pretty good, pretty good. Here, I see this on the left side. So he's running cover zero here, and this is this is just kind of a little pro tip about cover zero. If you don't shade, generally speaking, just cover zero in general is just the, the way they just don't, they just run weird uh, with streak routes. And so able to hit him, get seven, and uh, that's going to put me up two scores, and he's going to be out of here. So... Kind of came through a bad situation, um, you know, but uh, was able to able to get the W. So thanks for watching the video, guys. If you want to get my full ebooks, they're available on the Patreon. Link is going to be down in the description.